Lack of fulfillment is the number one reason people mismanage money. When you're not excited or fired up to spend time doing work that you love and that you can be passionate about, then you're looking for ways to fill the void. Hey there, Patrice Washington here, America's Money Maven and the creator of the Redefining Wealth podcast. And as always, I'm always enthused to have an opportunity to just share my heart and share why I do what I do. And we are still in this six-part series where I'm breaking down the six pillars of wealth. To me, this is the truth about wealth because so often we think that wealth is all about money and material possessions. And what I've learned on my own journey to restoring my own personal finances is that the conversation is so much bigger than that. There are so many pieces that you have to incorporate in order to create financial success. And it's really unfortunate that as quote unquote personal finance experts, so many of us really don't go deeper. Like we are really surface level with the information. And it's why I started the Redefining Wealth podcast, because one, I wanted to reshape how you see wealth because we just live in a culture that looks at it totally but backwards. <laughs> But I also wanted to break down my own story and journey, as well as share the testimonies and stories and inspiration from some pretty phenomenal people who are using the truths of these pillars to find success and wealth and really just live out the life that they desire and deserve. And so I wanted to start really this whole podcast with breaking down the pillars because I want you to know what you're getting when you subscribe. Like I wanted you to know what you're getting into because if you saw this as a personal finance thing and you just want to know about budgets and credit cards and coupon cutting, there are some phenomenal podcasts out there. This is probably just not going to be for you. But if you're really ready to dive deeper, and get to the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty and the mindsets and attitudes and behaviors and habits of people who create financial success, then you might want to stick around. And I've already broken down four pillars. The first is fit, which is about becoming your best self. The second is people, which is about creating relationships that matter. The third pillar was space, setting up your life to support you. And the fourth pillar was faith, and that's believing in something greater. And so I want to encourage you to go back and get that foundation because it's kind of like a building block thing. And I really like what we've been talking about so far. And hopefully you have been enjoying it too. And if you're new, hopefully you will enjoy it. And so today is the fifth pillar, which is work. And that's about living out your life's purpose. Work is about living out your life's purpose, which I see is a real key to wealth. Because anyone who's followed my work for some time as America's Money Maven, at some point over this last decade, then you've probably seen through my books or my speeches or my work in general that I've always gone well beyond the normal budgeting and coupon cutting conversation, right? If you look at my best-selling book, Real Money Answers for Every Woman, you'll notice that before I even talk about a budget or savings account or debt elimination strategy, because I do talk about those things, they're necessary. They're just not the only thing. But before I get to that, the first half of the book is broken up into two sections. So the first quarter, let's say, is all about shifting your mindset to create wealthy habits. But then that second quarter is about giving yourself permission to earn more money. Because I know that when I lost everything and I was down and out, it wasn't about cutting coupons or using rewards cards. Like I knew that I had gifts and talents and skills, things that I was born with, things that I was supposed to use to produce wealth that I wasn't doing anything with. And I was like, okay, yeah, I could do this, put some hours in to saving maybe $50 or even if it's $5,000, if it's on cookies and garbage and stuff that I don't eat, you know, that's not beneficial either. (laughs) But I'm like, if I could make $500 with the same amount of time and effort, right, it would be better because I would also be finding fulfillment in using my gifts. Because one thing I have learned as America's Money Maven and helping people all this time is that lack of fulfillment in my book is one of the number one reasons people mismanage money. Lack of fulfillment is the number one, I really believe the number one reason people mismanage money. Because when you're not excited or fired up to spend time doing work that you love and that you can be passionate about, then you're looking for ways to fill the void. 
You know, because I really think that knowing your purpose and walking in it daily is what helps you establish your priorities, right? And so when you don't know what your priorities are, it's really easy to go with the flow. Every time someone invites you out, you're running to go out or you want to window shop or you want to surf the internet aimlessly because you're unfulfilled. And the truth is that you're enough and stuff and things really shouldn't define you. But when we are not fulfilled and when we're only working to get a paycheck and we're not working in our purpose, it creates this gaping hole. It's like this unquenchable thirst that nothing will fill. And I really feel like when you're working in your purpose, you bring a different spirit to the table. Like you bring a sense of enthusiasm and energy to your work. You want to operate in excellence. You want to be known for greatness, right? It's just naturally putting you in a space where you attract more because people want to work with you. People want to bring opportunities your way. They want to connect with you. They want to partner. They want to introduce you to some of their biggest contacts. That does not happen to someone who's working merely to get by. And I'm not saying that this even happens overnight because the process is a journey, but it is so much more rewarding. You know, I can tell you for sure in my own life that so many of the most miraculous and profitable opportunities I've received didn't even come from asking someone or trying to force something to happen. In the people pillar, I talked about the fact that when I first got on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, which ended up becoming a weekly segment for over three years, I didn't ask for that. It was an opportunity that was attracted because I was working in my genius. I was working in my gifts. And I really believe even now, it's a light. There's a magnet. People can see that anointing, right? And they want to be a part of that. They want to connect to that in some form or fashion. But that's also why in the space pillar, we talk about protecting your space and your peace. Because when you are a light, when you are walking in your purpose, sometimes you also attract some charlatans (laughs) and some characters. So that's why this all goes together. But I'll tell you this, more often than not, I've really just received opportunities from nurturing relationships and then trusting my faith, like we talked about in the last pillar, to guide me and protect me on that journey. And there's just wealth in knowing what you are uniquely called to do and then being able to pursue it gracefully yet relentlessly. Because working in your purpose doesn't mean that you don't have to work hard. Because I still work very hard. And so many of the people that we're going to interview on this podcast for you, they work very hard. But it's just something really magical and special and, again, fulfilling about doing what you were called to do. My friends who are in corporate America or you work in the government sector or wherever you are, I don't want you to think that when I say working or walking in your purpose that I mean entrepreneurship. Because I am super crystal clear that not everyone should be an entrepreneur. Let me say that again. I am super, super duper crystal clear that not everyone walking in their purpose is going to be an entrepreneur. On your job, there is purpose for you. In that cubicle, in that corner office, there is purpose for you. There is a reason for you to be there. So I don't want you to think that work and living your life's purpose is about entrepreneurship. It's about career. It's about carving your own path too. What I see a lot is that people want to ditch their nine to five, mostly because as a culture, we try to shame it. I have no idea why that started or where it started. But the truth is, if you still feel unfulfillment on your job, you might already know what your gifts are. You might know what your talents and your skill set is, but you might be using it in the wrong way. Like, you might be using it in the in the wrong community. Maybe the people that you're around don't value you. It doesn't mean that you're not in your life's purpose. It might just not be in the right place, right? Or you might not be in the right industry, or you might not be in the right ministry, but you are on to something. You know what it is. So I want to encourage you, and what we're going to look at is how to take those gifts and those talents and those skills and that thing that you were born to do. Because let me tell you, I believe that we are all born to be the solution to someone else's problem. I believe that there's someone waiting on us. And I think I've said this in a previous episode. It's not about you. That's in the faith pillar. Like, that's what I've learned. When you believe in something greater, it's not about you. And even in this 
walking and working in your purpose, it's really not even about you. It's about how the world is supposed to be served with gifts that you were given. And it doesn't matter how many other people are doing it. It doesn't matter. You know, I always say Burger King didn't put McDonald's out of business. So it doesn't matter that there's someone else out there already doing it. There are people who only can receive it from you. There are entrepreneurs who are looking for your assistance in their business. There are corporations that need you to bring your talents to the table. And not only do they need you, you need it. You owe it to yourself to figure out what this purpose is, to know what the gifts are. Because when you do, that's when that void starts to fill. That's when you can get to a Friday and not go, well, I work hard, so I deserve to go shopping. Or I'm going to just turn up this weekend like I don't have a care in the world, really because you're trying to fill the void of hating what you did all week. You owe it to yourself to get crystal clear in this area, and that's a part of what we're going to do. I am so excited about the executives and the entrepreneurs and a lot of the people that we have lined up already confirmed guests that are going to share their stories and share how this pillar has taken them to levels that they never thought imaginable. This pillar, living out their life's purpose. Because let me tell you, a part of living out your life's purpose too, it might sound cool, it might sound sexy, but it's very lonely sometimes. Because just because you have the vision doesn't mean you're always ready to articulate it or you know how to truly express it. Sometimes you just feel it at first. And if you're anything like me, when I feel something I just try to take the next best step in that direction. It's not that I have it all flushed out. It's not that I always have some super duper airtight plan. It's about going with my gut sometimes because I see it as being a piece of this bigger vision. There's going to be people who don't get it. Even with that, there are going to be people who just don't understand. There are going to be people who don't support. And so this work piece and living and working and walking in your life's purpose is really important because sometimes you're going to have to do it by yourself. Sometimes you're going to do it alone. Sometimes you're going to do it and no one else is going to get it. But you have to stay committed to it because you're in alignment with what authentically speaks to you. And so I look forward to being able to share so many of the nuggets that I've learned along the way, but also just share the stories of some pretty phenomenal people. So that is what we'll be discussing. Whenever you hear me say, this one's for the work pillar, Those are the types of things that we're going to dissect right here on the Redefining Wealth podcast. So make sure you listen to the other pillars, subscribe, stay connected, head to patricewashington.com and just stay connected with me or find me on social media at Seek Wisdom PCW. That's Seek Wisdom PCW on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook because this conversation is going to get deep and I want you to be able to glean whatever you need from it so that you can live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. 